Hello, welcome to Kelly's Roadhouse, the podcast where we recap every single Sweet Valley High book in existence. I'm Paula and I'm here with Rich. Hello. This fortnight we are recapping book number 11, Too Good To Be True. The controversial. The controversial, Too Good To Be True. Very controversial. Yep. So, um... We we when we said on the Instagram we were doing this one, we had so many messages and comments from people saying, "I hate Suzanne." Yeah, I Suzanne, can't stand Suzanne. Suzanne Devlin's a bitch. Everybody um, hates her. <laughs> and uh, now that I finished it, I can see why. Yeah, all well, the cover says is Suzanne as perfect as she seems. No, <laughs> hell no. And the blurb on the back it calls her a devil in disguise. Devil, Devlin, devil. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah. Mm. The Waitful Twins are wild with excitement. Glamorous, sophisticated Suzanne Devlin is coming to Sweet Valley from New York City. Oh my God. For two weeks, Elizabeth will show her around town while Jessica has the time of her life in New York. Spoilers? The back of the book spoils the opening of the book. At first, Suzanne seems to be the most perfect girl in the world. She's beautiful and friendly and not in the least bit stuck up. All of the boys of Sweet Valley are absolutely crazy about her. But when Suzanne accuses Mr. Collins of trying to seduce her, Elizabeth knows there's more to Suzanne than meets the eye. Wow. The back of that book spoils near enough the whole story. I guess. Kind of, yeah. Well, it doesn't... Well... I suppose. Most of it. Anyway, we've got a yellow cover and it's got a picture of Suzanne on the front. Yes. Uh, She looks like a bit of a bitch to me. She she does. Um, the the winner of the book though, the the winner of the cover of the book goes to Elizabeth's face. Yeah, Elizabeth is standing. Well, Suzanne is looking in a mirror, a handheld mirror, mm-hmm. and like admiring her beauty. And mm-hmm. Elizabeth is standing next to her, giving her a slightly quizzical look. Yeah, yeah. She's, like, she's are you as perfect sure. as you seem? Yeah, yeah. Are you are you that perfect? Like, there's something funny about you, but I don't know what. Hmm. Well, she's going to find out what. She is going to find out very soon. And so are you. <laughs> yes, dear listener. We open with Jessica at the dinner table. She is very upset. Mm. She's very dramatic. She says she's going to die. Yeah, she's going to die if she can't go to New York City. Yeah. She casts a tearful, aqua-eyed glaze at everyone. Yeah, and um, her lower lip trembles for for, and she pauses for dramatic effect. Hmm. And she says it's probably the only chance she'll ever get to go to New York. It's like yeah. you're sixteen. Uh, yeah, you're, you'll you're probably 16. get another chance in your life. <laughs> You've got the rest of your life, but never mind. Um. So, just to explain, if you didn't catch the end of our last episode, which set this book up, um, the Wakefields, for some stupid reason. They've, they've entered into this crazy agreement that makes no sense. So Ned's friend Tom Devlin... Um, a diplomat. ...is sending... Yeah, not a rock star, a diplomat. Yeah. ...is sending uh, his daughter Suzanne to live with the Wakefields for the summer. Which sounds fine, doesn't it? Um, And then one of their daughters is going to go and live with the Devlins. Why? For, for, for no apparent reason. One of them. Is yeah. going to be sent. Yeah, the first thing that's wrong with this is why would you do that anyway? Mm. Secondly, if you couldn't afford to send them both, you'd just send one. But apparently only one of them can go. Yeah, and I thought, because this book as well makes a big deal out of the fact that um, Suzanne's parents are always busy. They've never had time for it. They're, they're always pawning her off on, on, mm. on, you know, like a board in school or whatever. And you kind of get the impression that I thought the reason that they were going to send her was because they didn't, they couldn't look after her at the time. Yeah. They were like, oh, we're too busy. But then they're decided to take on Liz or Jess and not both which is really bizarre it's like no no only one of your daughters yeah you'd come. send both or neither yeah yeah definitely um but apparently he wants to put money aside for their college fees next year so uh that's why he can't afford to send both of them yeah yeah but I mean presumably it's only travel costs I mean they are they are um 
they are staying yeah. in the Devlin house. So, oh well, never mind. Um, and Jess, Jess says she won't go to college and she'll make a living as a gypsy fortune <laughs> yeah, teller. Yeah, she said, said yeah, she'll, she'll make a... Uh, make money as a gypsy fortune teller. Um, that that should be the next book. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, that is that is a, a, quite an image for for Jess. And she says that she'll be too broken hearted to go to college anyway if she can't go. Yeah, and um, and then we get Jess's imagination of New York. Yeah, do you want to so, roll that one off? I mean, yeah, I love Jess. This is daydreams. amazing. She this has is amazing. she has some really good daydreams all the way through the series. She does. So she drifts into a daydream. She's whirling breathlessly beneath the flashing lights of some chic Manhattan disco when a hand touches her arm. It's Mick Jagger. (laughs) Of course. Pardon me. I believe this dance is mine, he says. Mm. Or she'd be strolling through the glittery aisles of Tiffany's and the owner would just give her a free emerald necklace. Just give her it. Yeah, because it looks good on her. Yeah. Apparently he says, it's made for you. Look how the jewels match your eyes. Um. yeah. She would protest that it's too much, but he would say, it's payment enough for me just to see you wearing it. Yeah, that's that's how they all are in Tiffany's. They're, they're just happy to give away stuff if it looks good on you. Mm. It's fine. And she might even be discovered by a top modelling agency and end up on the cover of Cosmo magazine. Yes, she become might. the next Cheryl Teagues. Yeah, I don't know who that, that is. is. I'm assuming that's a model from the 80s. Um, Stephen suggests they flip a coin for the trip. Yeah. And Ned and Liz and Alice agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess so. I mean, I mean that is fair. If you're going to do this unfair thing of it's sending unfair, one of your daughters, yeah. then fair enough. Uh, we're reminded that Alice could pass for the twins' older sister, of course, again. And this leads into the description of the twins: mm-hmm. sunshine blonde hair, blue green eyes. Each has a dimple in their left cheek. Blah yeah. blah blah blah. The the, the standard. Um... Twin but bio. the similarity ended there. Yes. Liz is fairness personified. Well, maybe uh, no. sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it's debatable. She thinks she is. She thinks she she thinks she is fairness personified. Yes, <clears throat> but Jessica was clever and devious. That's true. And we get a Stephen description. Mm. He looks like a carbon copy of their tall, dark-haired, athletic father. <laughs> Mentioning that Ned's athletic again. Yeah, it's less creepy when it's not their sister describing it. When it's the book describing Ned as athletic, that's that I think is fine. He's a when lawyer it's... who spends all day in an office. He can't be that athletic. Well, maybe there's a there's a gym at the office. Yeah, maybe. Well, I don't know. We didn't hear about that gym with uh, Jessica and Dennis Creighton. Maybe he's got a punch bag making in his out office, after hours. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Mm. Um. And Jessica bursts into tears when the coin is flipped. I know. She's like immediately just starts crying. Yeah, you can guess what the outcome was. We don't need to even say. Well, Liz does say that she's sorry, but Jess says she will probably never leave this little town in 137 Yay, years. Yeah, you didn't miss it this week. I think I got both this <laughs> time. Um. And then at bedtime, Liz is trying to console Jess. Um, with the worst consolation ever. It reminds her of Lila's birthday bash mm-hmm. and the class picnic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yes. So she she does. Yeah. She talks about Lila's um, birthday bash at the country club um, and this this class, junior class picnic. Um, but I Sounds was, good. I was thinking about the item of clothing. Ah, uh, yeah. So... Basically, Liz says that, you know, you're not going to New York, but it's not all bad. While I'm gone, you can wear my rubbish trousers, <laughs> right? And they're called culottes? Culottes. Culottes. <laughs> they, I was like, how is this in any way a consolation? Because I Googled them to see what they look like. I'm like, okay, fine. But like, not that, how does that make up? Yeah, Rich Googled and sent me a picture and was like, what was it you said? Uh, how the fuck does this make up for not yeah. going to New York? And it's I a think, really probably. funny picture of them. It was uh, that was a, it. that was a shop image. <laughs> you can buy them today. They're still they're still around. Um, and Jess Snidely says to Liz mm. that poor Todd will have to go to Lila's party on his own. Oh no! But he's too good looking to be alone for long. And then she tells Liz that Lila has a crush on Todd. Yeah. And that she's never come across a boy who's been able to resist her. No, apparently Lila's had this crush for ever, mm. and it's just never been brought up until right this convenient yeah. moment. And Liz, Liz realises what Jess is doing. 
Um, of course. And she says, why do I get the feeling I'm being talked out of this trip? <laughs> and then Jessica takes that as Liz saying that she's she can go. She's literally like, okay, thanks. And she just runs out of the room and runs downstairs and tells everyone that she's going. <laughs> yeah. It, it did say as well that um, when she was talking to, to Jess about the that Jess was mentioning the picnic and all of that, it does say that Liz felt bad that she was missing the picnic, but not because she was missing the picnic, because she was missing the chance to write an article about the picnic. Yeah, what are you going to write about a picnic? What A? That sounds like the worst article well, It does turn out to be pretty eventful. I mean, that's true, actually. But, obviously, she doesn't know that at this point. No, it, and and also, like, you're, you're giving up, or you're thinking about not going on this once-in-a-lifetime trip, according to <laughs> Jess, because you want to write Never an article to go again. for the eyes and ears column. Um, so at the airport, Elizabeth yeah. is carrying Jess's luggage for her. Of course. Uh, Jess says she's looking forward to meeting lots of exciting men. Yeah, now now that Jess is like going, she's saying she's immediately just rubbing it into Liz about how amazing this trip's going to be. It's the most amazing place. Yeah, she accuses Liz of being jealous of her because uh, Liz tells her to be careful. Yeah, just like basically warns her sister about getting mugged, and she's yeah. like, "Oh, you're so jealous." It's like, well. But actually, Liz thinks to herself that, you know, she doesn't actually want to go anymore anyway. Like, yeah, she's she's actually thought about it. Yeah, she thought if she did want to go, she wouldn't have let Jess talk her out of it anyway. Um, yeah. She wants to have the summer with Todd mm-hmm. and go on the picnic. Write an article for the Eyes and Ears column. Yeah. And then as soon as Jess's plane takes off, they go to wait for Suzanne's plane, which is conveniently... At the same time. Yeah, it's arriving like within minutes of, yeah. of, of Jess leaving. Yeah, That's handy, isn't it's it? It's pretty handy, yeah. Um, Liz says she bets that Suzanne is really sophisticated. Well, she bets that, but she's having problems seeing who's coming off the plane. Because apparently she's um, straining to see past a couple with three pudgy children. <laughs> It's pudgy children and blocking the whole just, they're view. They're blocking the view. But of course, <laughs> then she catches sight of mm. the most beautiful girl she's ever seen. Yeah. So Liz thinks that Suzanne will make them all look like hopeless idiots. <laughs> it's like, no, you, you make yourself look like You make, you make like yourself one. look like a hopeless all idiot. All of you do. Yeah. Every book. Uh, and she thinks that going to boarding school in Europe sounds like something that happens in a book. Yeah, she somehow thinks it like boarding school's like romantic to Liz. I guess because it was in Europe. Yeah, everything in Europe in these books is, is like, like romanticized. Sophisticated. And, yeah. Okay. We, we live in Europe. It's not. It's, it's not. not that sophisticated over <laughs> here. No. <laughs> um, yeah. When she sees her, she literally gasps. Yeah, it takes her breath away. She's tall and willowy, with black hair tumbling in glossy waves past her shoulders. Um. Her back was bare in a cheek sundress. Ooh. Her features couldn't have been more perfect if they were sculpted by Michelangelo. <laughs> and she spoke with an enchanting accent that was vaguely British sounding. Yeah, she um, she seems excited to see Liz. And she says that she's prettier than she thought she'd be. Mm. Which was interesting. I was like, I'm sure you've been sent a photo or something by now. Yeah. But, okay. Um, and she says that Sweet Valley is a perfectly adorable little town. Yes, yes. Uh, she says that even wild horses couldn't keep her away, which I can't imagine is much of a problem in New York. Mm-hmm. And Liz promises to show her everything, starting with the class picnic. Mm, yes, of course. And she tells Liz about her boyfriend, Pete, and she asks if Liz has a boyfriend. Yeah. And Liz goes red because her deepest feelings about Todd weren't something she felt comfortable sharing with anyone. Not even like her... she didn't she didn't ask for your fucking deepest feelings. No. She just asked if you had a boyfriend. And apparently she doesn't <laughs> like discussing it even with her closest friends. Yeah. It's like it's your boyfriend. And yeah, yeah. you're right. She only asked well, like do yeah. you have one? She didn't yeah. say what are your deepest feelings? Could have just said yes. <laughs> yeah, yes would have been adequate. <laughs> or yes his name is Todd if you yeah. wanted to get a bit more specific. Um, so she tells I mean, Suzanne. She's going to find out. I know. It's not like she's going to find out you got a boyfriend during this trip, right? I mean. But yeah, she tells Suzanne that she'll meet Todd at the picnic and yeah. leaves it at that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they go for a swim in the pool, in the Wakefields pool. Oh my goodness. And of course, Suzanne looks stunning in a striped bikini. It's not that she looks stunning in this book because the book makes a, a clear point of like, she is gorgeous, right? She's like perfectly proportioned. Is she? She's wonderful. <laughs> she's she's gorgeous. 
it's Liz, right? It's Liz's obsession with how perfect mm. Suzanne is. Liz, that does seem me. Liz goes over the top all the time. And like to her face, she's like saying it to her all the time. Yeah. It's like so ridiculous. Um, she even makes Liz feel self-conscious about her own size six figure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And Liz compliments her swimming and says even her boyfriend must have trouble keeping up with her. <laughs> it's like, what? Because he's like a, a man couldn't possibly, you know, a woman couldn't possibly swim as well as a man. Yeah, Liz um, Liz thinks it would uh, probably be hard to choose a guy when so many are after her. Because mm. um, they must all be after her. And she thinks that it must be like choosing an ice cream at Baskin mm. Robbins. At where? I know. I, I think they should have gone to Casey's, to be so honest So do I. Disgusting. Um. She says that her boyfriend follows her everywhere (laughs) and her parents want her married off so they can get rid of her. And I can see why after reading the rest of this book. That's why they bloody sent her here for the summer. Yeah, maybe. She says they sent her off to boarding school when she was nine and Liz feels sorry for her. But she also worries about Jessica spending two weeks with these people. Yeah, yeah. These people. These bloody people. Yeah, she wonders how her parents could be so callous to send her off to boarding school. Probably because she, I'm going to guess she was a problem child. Yeah, from probably. From what we know of her. Uh, from what we find from what out, we will certainly. know of her. And they all have a barbecue on the Wakefield patio, and Liz has made them a lemon pie with lemons that they grew in their own backyard. That's cute. Sounds so amazing. I want to go. Yeah. It's presumably the right temperature over there to, to do that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm not sure we'd have much luck growing lemons over here, but we can no. try. Can't even grow the grass from a cat. No. Um, and Suzanne is lovely and she does all the cleaning up. Yeah, so of course Alice loves her immediately because yeah. she can be her slave. Another slave. Yeah. Um, and Suzanne says she's always wanted a sister and she can't wait to meet Liz's friends. So, yeah, you know, I'll she's just can. great. She's she's helpful. She's polite. You know, she's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. Or is she? Well, Liz <laughs> does briefly mention that it must be hard bring, being an only child. And that does seem to, to bother Suzanne for a moment, like a second or two, before she kind of brushes it off. Mm. Um, but then, of course, you know, Liz suggests that they, they need to get some sleep because they've got to get the picnic sorted in the morning. Or she does. Mm. And of course, Suzanne, being Miss Perfect, is the first to offer to help. She of says course. she's happy to help. And Liz, you know, Liz thinks, well... I'm, you know, you're the guest. You shouldn't be doing all this. But of course, Suzanne is wonderful and Suzanne is happy to help. <laughs> At the picnic, Winston is serenading Suzanne. He's on bended knee with a guitar and he's singing, uh, pass me the mustard, pass me the pickles, but please don't pass me by. Is that an actual <laughs> song? Because I didn't. Not that I've I was heard. like, has he made this up? I it's think like he's the made it worst up. lyrics I've ever heard. And apparently his Adam's apple is bobbing up and down on his scrawny throat. Oh my goodness. What an image. Well, he tells. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, no, no, go for it. He, he tells Suzanne with his hand on his heart that he's in love with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, he's not the only boy. No, it's noticed Suzanne because even, even asshole Bruce Patman has um turned his reflector sunglasses in Suzanne's direction. Mm. And how does he describe her? Um, he says that he doesn't see what's uh, crazy about falling for a foxy lady like Suzanne. Mm-hmm. It's like, please don't say that, yeah, Bruce. Please, Bruce, you rapey fuck. And Enid is attracting a few stars as well. Yes, she is. <laughs> She's got a new candy-striped bathing suit on. But what does the book say about her? It says um, she because that was nice. I was like, oh, good, yeah. She's got she's turning some heads. Yeah. She looks very pretty in this outfit. And then she wasn't stunning like Suzanne, <laughs> but she had a prettiness that was all her own. Which to me came across really bitchy. Yeah, that does. It was that like, sounds eh, like a she's bitchy not comment. Great, but she looks yeah. all right. <laughs> I mean, of course she's not Suzanne. You know? Of course not. No one's Suzanne. Beauty is not subjective. No. Um, she says to Liz that she hopes George doesn't become a member of the Suzanne fan club. And Liz says she was worried about Todd too, but you can't blame them for looking. So, well, actually, you, actually, you can. Actually, because you if can. they're at a picnic with their girlfriends, I wouldn't expect them to be staring at another another girl, actually. Yeah, Liz, so you can bl- fucking blame them. Liz basically says out loud at the picnic, presumably with Todd in earshot, because very soon, you know, Todd's there, right? She says, yeah, um, you know, 
you can't blame guys for looking. Who wouldn't? She's incredibly beautiful. So he's, she's basically saying, like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, go on, Because she's Todd. so stunning. <laughs> like, go for yeah. it. Knock yourself out, mate. <laughs> and then for some reason... Um... Oh, hang on, I'm at the wrong place. There we go. Yeah, so uh, Suzanne's getting on with everybody and she's helping with the food. Yep. And Enid says that Suzanne is too good to be true. Quote, too good to be true, unquote. And then um, for some reason, Mr. Collins is there. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Collins and his inappropriate turning up and hanging around with students yeah. continues because he has agreed um, to be the the sh- official chaperone and unofficial lifeguard. Mm. Did he need a chaperone for a picnic? No, but he was also the chaperone for the country club when they had the... Was it Ina's birthday? birthday? Yeah, he like, went to Ina's birthday. Why are you here? You're a And teacher. he went to the club with them after. Yeah. yeah. The oh, caravan yeah. Yeah, yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's a, he, it's really weird. It is weird. And I and I know, I know, it's quite... He gets some very unfair treatment in this book. He does. But he doesn't do himself any favours when he behaves no. like this. <laughs> And then we're reminded that he's easygoing, good looking, and always there for the students. Too damn right he's always there. Mm. He's literally all literally always there. Um he's passing out hamburgers along with portions of dry wit. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Have a plate of dry wit. <laughs> <laughs> and Liz notices Suzanne looking at him yeah. and she thinks why not why not why fucking not because he's your fucking teacher but he's an attractive man why not so in Liz's <laughs> mind that means it's fine he's the best looking teacher at Sweet Valley High yeah and then we're told again how handsome he is of course and that he reminds Liz of Robert Redford yeah well I oh well I, I can't wait until we meet mini Robert Redford later on <laughs> my favourite character of this book <laughs> And then they all have a water fight, started by Enid and George. Mm-hmm. And Todd says it's starting to look like Marine World. <laughs> Think of the whales. Think of, Think the, of the whales, Todd. You're meant to be anti-Marine World. You are meant to be anti-Marine World. <laughs> um, and then suddenly Liz notices Suzanne floundering in the middle of the lake. Oh, my God. She calls for Mr. Collins. Mm. And Mr. Collins immediately jumps into action. And... Um, Apparently, he heads towards her with powerful strokes. Mm. Um, he drags her back to shore and everyone cheers. Yeah. She sobs and buries her face into his muscular chest. Yeah, she says she doesn't understand what happened. And then as soon as he leaves, she's surrounded by guys. Mm-hmm. Aaron Dallas wraps her up in a towel. Mm. Tom Mackay holds her hand. And Winston serenades her with a song about a fair lady lost at sea. Yeah. And Bruce brings her iced tea. Yeah. Um, yeah, this girl's nearly drowned and they're all just like, oh, now's my chance. Yeah, yeah get I in go. there. Get in there while I can. <laughs> um, so yeah, as all the boys help Suzanne, Liz thinks something's odd. Mm. Because Suzanne was swimming laps earlier and yet all of a sudden she almost drowned. It doesn't yeah. make sense. She was a really strong swimmer. Really strong swimmer. I mean, you could get cramp or something. Though. Yeah. It's not like ridiculous. No. But it, Suspicion. Suspicion. Hmm. It's her writer's mind. Yes, it's her writer's mind. Writer's no mind. one would be imaginative enough to think like Liz because she's <laughs> a writer for the Oracle. <laughs> and then uh, Todd wraps his arm around Liz and asks if she's okay. Mm-hmm. And he's got beads of moisture glistening on his broad, sunburnished chest. Yeah. And Liz I bet says, all, I bet uh, all the girls. I bet all the girls check out Todd, but you can't blame them because Todd's mm, so beautiful. <laughs> Um, and Todd says that, uh, no, Liz says it was weird how Mr. Collins couldn't get away quick enough. Mm, yeah, he seemed very uh, eager to, mm. to get away after he'd saved her. And, and Todd says maybe he's just uncomfortable being the hero. Mm-hmm. But he says he's only concerned about her, about her. And she tells him that she may need mouth to mouth. He starts kissing her and stops. And she says, I'll tell you when you can stop. Damn. Slave driver. He grins at her. <laughs> This is one of their like unfunny like banter scenes. They, I love them so much. I love them because they always go on way <laughs> and too they're long. They're never as well. funny. No, they're, they're never. Well, funny. They are. I'm, I was like pissing myself at some of them. Like, I don't think they're funny one, in the but... way that the author intends. <laughs> no, um, and Liz, they'd be like the most annoying couple at any event. You just go, oh, for God's sake, guys! Just... <laughs> there they go again. There they go again. Just... <laughs> oh Jesus! Um, and Liz wonders what Jess is up to. Uh, and says she's sure she's having the time of her life. Well, 
Let's see for ourselves. Well, meanwhile, in New York, and this is like the opening line or something, Jessica feels as if she's been hit in the chest with a sledgehammer. Sounds great. And I was like, oh my God, is she having a heart attack? This um, is a completely different kind of book than we thought. <laughs> yeah. Is she being assaulted? <clears throat> nope. She's just met a good looking boy. Yeah, of course. The most gorgeous male she'd ever laid eyes on. Mm. He's standing in the doorway of the Devlin's apartment. Mm. And uh, she she says every guy she meets is like the most handsome guy she's ever seen. I'm assuming Every she, book that's she, like, oh my God. She presumably only ever has met more gorgeous people since Double Love. Yeah, they like, just get more and more gorgeous every time. Every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he tells her in a deep, sexy voice that his name is Pete McCaffrey. Yeah. She notices the way his green eyes sparkled and his chestnut hair fell in sh- sun street locks over his tanned forehead. Tanned forehead? Okay. <laughs> just his forehead. Yeah. He looks like he's just stepped off of a yacht in his blue Lacoste shirt and white slacks. He sounds like a prick. In fact, he probably <laughs> did step off of a yacht. Probably, actually. Yeah. Um, she thinks he must be at least 20. Uh, she, she tells him that the Devlins aren't home and he just says, uh, too bad. And then he sinks down into a throne-like chair by the fireplace. Yeah. Um, Jess also thinks that him being 20, um, Alice would have a fit if she ever dated anyone that old. Um, and I thought, yeah, understandably, because yeah. you're 16. Yeah. Like, that's not right. Um, we're told that Jess has been in New York for two days. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Devlins met her at the airport. And Mr. Devlin was uh, short and roundish with thinning hair and a bushy moustache. Mrs. Devlin was tall and gloriously thin. And fucking hates taxi cabs. With- <laughs> She's got the kind of cheekbones Jess could only achieve by sucking hers in. As far as they would go. Which this sounds does Ill. not sound healthy. No, it sounds awful. Gloriously thin. Who uses that phrase, gloriously I've, thin? I have never we'll heard go away with that nowadays. Gloriously thin no. is a phrase. Um, she, sound, actually, she sounds quite scary because it says... Um, she sounds like a witch. It says something. her black hair was in a skin-tight bun from which not a single strand of hair dared to escape. Yeah, she just like, sounds like sounds like a creepy librarian or something. Well, I I had a really clear picture in my head, but I don't know if may, many people oh, would know who I'm talking about. Throw it out there. Um, I don't know if this was on in America, but in the UK there was the worst witch. Yes, the and worst Miss, witch. Mrs. Yeah. Hardbroom from the worst witch. I don't know that actress that played her, but she's what I imagined. Uh, you could probably YouTube it and find. Yeah, it. You're right. I'll, I'll get that a picture is, of her. That really works. Yeah. Do yeah. you remember? Yeah, what she I do. Like? Yeah. Yeah, that works. And she always had, she had on like a long black dress and mm. really tight pulled back hair. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. She was yeah. really thin. Yeah. Absolutely. She was the evil teacher. Yes. Well, this is the evil Mrs. Oh, Devlin. I love the worst witch. That was a good show. Mildred Hubble. I'm going to read a worse witch book soon. Um, so they got picked up from the airport, um, Mr. and Mrs. Devlin, uh, in mm. a limo. Of course. With Jess. And Mrs. Devlin told Jess <laughs> to avoid taxi cabs because, yeah. in her words, they are dreadful contraptions driven by dreadful little men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'm getting a pretty strong opinion and picture of, of the Devlins immediately. Yeah, Certainly horrible. Mrs. Devlin. They're bloody awful. Yeah. Um, and then on Saturday, Mrs. Devlin takes Jess, took Jess shopping on the yeah. Fifth Avenue. Um, and Jess was shocked at the prices. Well, it doesn't matter. The prices don't matter <clears throat> because as soon as they see you wearing that in Tiffany's, they'll just give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and apparently she was going to get Liz a scarf. Mm. But she ends up getting her some free perfume samples that are being handed out instead. <laughs> yeah. And she said she's gonna. She'll just pretend like she bought them. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that she's gonna know because of the size of the bottles that they're clearly yeah. testers. Surely you could do something better than free sample. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they had lunch at the Russian Tea Room, mm. which Jess has read about in People magazine. Yeah. Um, People magazine. I haven't heard of that for a long time. It's been a while. Um, Mrs. Devlin spends the whole lunch. Smoking skinny brown cigarettes, and she doesn't touch any of the food. Well, I'm not, not surprised, surprised because she's gloriously thin. Yeah. And so back to now, um, Jess doesn't care if Peter's Susanna's boyfriend, and she thinks, "Why should I be loyal to to a girl I've never met?" Mm-hmm. Go sisterhood. Yeah. Go sisterhood. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, Pete tells her he's got tickets for a concert that night that he bought for him and Suzanne. Yes, Piano Horowitz. And he thought that Tom and Felicia might like them. Mm. Um, Jess thinks it's unbelievably sophisticated calling his girlfriend's parents by their first names. <laughs> wow. Well, he's not going to call them mum and dad, is he? <laughs> <laughs> um, and she tells him that the Devlins will be at a party and she asks him what the concert is. Yeah. And he says, uh, Piano Horowitz. Just like two words. Yeah. And um, Jess says that she loves him. Yeah, she, really. she immediately says that she loves him. I mean, at this point, he was must have been like 90 odd or something, right? I don't, I I don't know who thought. he is. <laughs> I have to confess. Um, <laughs> and then, um, yeah, he, I love this bit because like, she immediately says, like, oh, I love him. And then Pete's like, you know, what did you think of his mm. latest recording? And Jess like, obviously doesn't have a fucking clue. So she's yeah. like, oh, it was interesting. <laughs> Can't um, go wrong with with interesting. It could be good. Could mean yeah, bad. Yeah, it could go either <laughs> way. Um, Pete says he found it a bit dry. Mm. Um, yeah, she um, she expected him to invite her, but, but yeah, he doesn't. Course. Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of like um, this portion of the book. I quite liked. This is like um, you know, in in Sweet Valley, Jess is the big fish. Yeah, and, and then she realizes when she gets to New York, she's not that special compared to everyone else. She stands yeah. out in Sweet Valley here. She's just another face in the crowd, and and people mm-hmm. aren't her tricks aren't working. Um, but of course, as well, she needs to bear in mind she's trying these tricks on presumably a twenty year old. Yeah, you know, it's not like you're you're normally doing this with eighteen year olds, Max. Right? This is someone who's mm. getting quite mature now. Your, your yeah, she aren't she work. literally like pauses to wait for him to ask her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he just doesn't. Um, so then she uh, she quite out of character she says um i won't mind going with you if you still want to go <laughs> yeah so apparently she panics because she thinks she may never see him again it's just a moment of panic hmm. um so he says he'll pick her up at five thirty so they can have dinner first oh yes um and jess is obviously very excited and she thinks that she can't wait to tell lila and cara when she gets back hmm she takes hours to get ready for the date. Using all of Suzanne's stuff. Yeah, she's having the time of her life using all of Suzanne's stuff. She In, in the bathroom, she uses all of the scented bath oils and perfume. Um, and then her, Suzanne's vast array of powders, eyeshadows and lipsticks. And apparently she knew that with her natural beauty, she didn't really need makeup. But she wants to look older. But wearing too little seemed horribly unsophisticated. Mm. See, now, at this point in the book, I was thinking that Jess was a bit of a bitch for using all of Suzanne's stuff. But when we later discover what Suzanne's like, I'm really yeah. glad. I'm kind of, apart from like ob- the obvious thing that happens in New York, I'm happy about all of this. <laughs> and then came her outfit. Everything she brought seemed too unsophisticated. Mm. They're they're fucking obsessed with the word sophisticated. In this book. I've written it down about ten times. Jess is obsessed with looking everything sophisticated. sophisticated, and Liz because Liz keeps saying how sophisticated Suzanne is. Yeah, they're just obsessed with sophistication. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the best her best dress that she brought with her a white dotted Swiss with a ruffled neckline seemed like something a choir girl would wear. It's just it not does sound a bit enough. weird. It doesn't sound sophisticated to me. Sophisticated, sophisticated, sophisticated. <laughs> so she just goes to Suzanne's closet and helps herself to a black cocktail dress with a plunging back. Yeah. Like, Jesus, you like you're you're a guest. Like, yeah. <laughs> doesn't mean you can borrow literally every everything. Yeah. Um, even her boyfriend. Even her boyfriend. Even um, borrowing a boyfriend. And uh, apparently, it makes her look at least nineteen. Mm. She's excited to see Pete's reaction. She is. I, I've got this vision in my head of of Jess going mental over like makeup, like mm. like she's like, oh my god, I need to. I look, look more... so sophisticated. I just imagine she just looks like a clown. Yeah. At the end of all this, just like plastered in, and smells in like a perfume shop. Yeah, just just like that kind of um, like takes your breath away. Cause you can't breathe because it's just so toxic. Yeah. Like she's just like this toxic mess now. <laughs> Um, Pete's nearly half an hour late and he doesn't even apologise. I know. Apparently, Jess like is near nearly in tears. Apparently she would have cried if it wasn't for the makeup. Mm. I was like, it's only 30 minutes though. It's not like massively long. Oh, come on. If you were meant to pick me up to go for a meal and you were 30 minutes yeah, late, yeah, I suppose there is no is message. True. I wouldn't be happy. You wouldn't be happy, but you wouldn't be crying. No, I wouldn't cry. You'd be angry. Yeah. Although, you know, if I'd never met you before. Maybe, right? maybe. I love that she, the first date. she she literally waits for an apology that just doesn't happen. Yeah. 
And he doesn't, and she waits for him to compliment her appearance. And he doesn't, as well. and he doesn't do that either. He basically, well, he does what you would like. Obviously, have thought if you had any common sense when you were putting on Suzanne's dress, given that he's Suzanne's go- like boyfriend. He immediately is like, "Is that Suzanne's dress yeah. you're wearing?" It's like, yeah, yeah like, why are you wearing my girlfriend's dress? Yeah, like you absolute weirdo, and all of her makeup. Yeah. Um. She says she doesn't know what she would have done if he hadn't asked her out. Mm. And it's like, uh, she, he didn't ask you out. <laughs> yeah. You asked yeah. him. Yeah. Um, and, and then uh, they go for dinner in a restaurant um, at the top of the World Trade Center. Yeah, Windows on the, the World. The Windows of the World. It was Sounds really, really cool. It was a really fancy restaurant. I remember seeing Oh, is it real? It. Yeah, it's real. It was Oh, real. I want to go. Not, you can't, no. Oh, yeah. Shit, sorry. Um, but, um, but it was really fancy. It was, like, super fancy. Oh. Yeah. So it look, kind of overlooks the whole city. And she's dizzy from the amazing view. Mm, yes. Um, they have wine with dinner, and it makes her feel sophisticated. <laughs> sophisticated, <laughs> For yes. For fuck's sake. <laughs> but Pete is keeping her at arm's length, and her flirting is having no effect on him at all. Yeah, basically, Pete is just a gentleman at this point, and it just infuriates He's just acting like a Jess. normal person. Yeah, he's just acting normal. Like a normal 20-year-old with a 16-year-old nearby. Yeah. He's just treating her like... like Although his, his girlfriend's 16, so that's also well, that's the true, reason, actually. Isn't I suppose, it? yeah, I suppose, yeah, there is that. Um, <clears throat> she finds the concert boring... Yeah, she struggles to even stay awake. Are. Yeah, and then on the way home, she invites him in, but he says he's got to run. Yeah, and then he and then he leans across her, and she thinks he's going to kiss oh, her. I loved this bit. <laughs> but he just opens the car door. Yep, <laughs> and says, "Sleep tight, little Jessica." She is fucking fuming. <laughs> she has never been more humiliated in her mm-hmm. life. I'm sure she has, but yeah, I'm sure she has. I mean, the time she was thrown in the pool by everyone in school is probably yeah. more humiliating, but. So let's go back to Sweet Valley. Why not? Um, Liz has lost her lavalier. The gold lavalier. lavalier. Yeah. However the hell you pronounce it. Did you see the Instagram story? No. Like, I don't know how to pronounce lavalier. Necklace. Or lavalier because I knew we were going to be talking about it a lot. A lot, yeah. So I googled it, mm-hmm. how to pronounce it, and it gave me three mm-hmm. different answers. We'll go with necklace. It gave me the answer lavalier, lavalier. And another one, I can't remember. So we can't go wrong, whichever one we pick. We'll oh, just... oh, the other one was like really French. It was like Lavalier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's let's go with Lavalier. <laughs> now, of course, these are um, important. They've been in pretty much every book, I think. There's been a mention yeah. of them. Um, they were given to the twins on their 16th birthday by mm. Alice and Ned. An expensive present. Um, this the... the the uh, the item that that Jessica famously lied about losing to try and get Bruce's attention, but yeah. Bruce didn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Winston started looking everywhere for it, even though it wasn't actually there because she <laughs> made it up. Um, so it it tremendous um, sentimental value as well as value. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Liz says she's sure she left it on the dresser. Um, and of course Suzanne says I'll help you look for it later. Yeah, and and the the book does say that you know. Alice has made some eggs, but Liz, Liz isn't hungry because she actually she feels really bad about losing this because it's, mm. it's a big thing, right? It's an yeah. important thing to her. Um, and over the past week, we learned that Suzanne has been really helpful. Yes, yeah, she's been perfect. So on Sunday, she'd gotten up early and she made the family an elegant breakfast. Mm, French toast. French toast with grated lemon peel and powdered sugar. That sounds gross. I, th- I was going to say that sounds really nice. <laughs> grated lemon peel? Yeah, I would have grated lemon peel. I don't know. And put it in lemon cake. Oh, I really like lemon cake. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. Sounds and then, great. <laughs> and then if I make lemon cake, I haven't made one for a while, I, I grate lemon peel on the top. Oh, okay. It, it's nice. Wow. But I, I never thought of putting it on toast with no, sugar. No, it's quite, but, quite um, fancy. I'd, yeah. Give uh, it a I go. mean, obviously Alice is over the moon with this, uh, this kind of behavior from a kid. Mm. Doing all the work for her. And then on Monday, she helped Stephen paint an old canoe that he's been restoring. Right. We haven't heard about this canoe. No. Why have we not heard about this canoe? And why don't we ever hear about it again? What's the story with this canoe? Yeah. Um. She'd help with dishes. She ran errands, and she cleaned the house. Yeah. And even Lila loves her. Which is saying something because apparently Lila sees all boys as uh, all girls. They're pretty yeah. competition, and of course, Suzanne is the most pretty, gorgeous woman ever created. Yeah. Um. She's had her over to play tennis. Yeah. Um, Liz says Suzanne has cast a spell over the male population of Sweet Valley. Yeah. Because the Wakefield's phone has been ringing non-stop. <laughs> 
So Tom Mackay has called her twice, called her twice. Aaron Dallas has called her three times. Bruce Patman has only called her once because he's too cool. Yeah, yeah. But that's a lot for Bruce, the fact that he phoned at all. Mm. But Winston <laughs> has gone full on stalker and he's called her 12 bloody times. It's not, plus, just, it's not just the phone call, no, though. Plus, serenaded her from the front lawn. And? Uh, that's all I got. Oh. <laughs> he also, apparently... um. Wrote her name. Uh, sorry. Oh, that's coming that up later. later? The that toilet later? Roll. Yeah, that's okay, later. That's later. Yeah. We'll get he to hasn't it. Done sorry. That yet. <laughs> sorry. We'll get to that. Um, because this that was like what? Yeah, it's going a bit far. It's going but, a bit um, far. So, yeah, that morning, Todd takes them to the beach. Yes. Um, and Liz says that they can look for the necklace later because she doesn't want to spoil the day at the beach. Yeah. Um, and Suzanne asks if the necklace is valuable. And she says it did cost a lot, but it's more sentimental value. Yeah. But then, as they head out of the door, wow. Suzanne puts her hand in her pocket and fingers a gold necklace coiled up inside while smiling to herself. Yeah. So we're starting to see the oh mask slip, and very soon it's going to slip completely. Mm. Um, Liz says to Todd that on the way to the beach... She could really do with stopping off at Mr. Collins um, because she has to drop off some papers. Um, I, apparently, this can't wait until Monday or the next day at school. She yeah. just needs to deliver it now. So, okay. And that that is not normal to just drop over at your teacher's house? No, it's not normal. It was the same with um, uh, Miss Dalton. Oh, like, yeah, when Enid, Enid just, just went over like, there. turns up at her house. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, but, of course, Todd agrees. Um, and they stop off at the house. Um and, um, you know... The house is yellow. The, the house is yellow. And as they're pulling up, Suzanne asks if Mr. Collins is married. Mm. Um, and Liz says, you know, he's divorced um, and he has a six-year-old adorable little boy called Teddy. <laughs> Suzanne says she loves kids. Yeah. And she offers to go and give Mr. Collins the envelope so that she can thank him for saving her life. Which I thought was fair. You know, I was like, okay. If if someone said that to you, you'd be like, oh, yeah, he did. He did kind of help you a lot. Well, Liz day. thinks Fair it's enough. amazing because Liz is like, oh my god, you're just the best person. He's the best. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she gets no answer when she knocks on the door. Mm. So she heads around to the back of the house. Yes, Mister Collins is watering his garden as Suzanne mm. creeps up behind him. It sounds really creepy. Yeah, she makes him jump. Mm. Um, and he asks what he can do for her, and it's like, if I was Mister Collins, I'd be like, how. How the hell do you know where I live? And what are you doing here? How did you get here? What are you like, doing? Yeah, you don't even go to my school. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you're not even a student. You're just at my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she thinks to herself how naive he is. Yeah, this is where the mask slips Yeah, completely. so we get her in her monologue. Yeah. She thinks to herself how naive Mr. Collins is. Just like Liz, <laughs> who's, who will spend the next 100 years looking for that necklace. And she, then she thinks the Wakefields don't realise that she's sneering at all of them behind yeah, their backs. They're all gullible. Plus everyone else in this hick little town. Yeah, fuck them all. <laughs> uh, she hands Mr. Collins the papers and she also thanks him for saving her life. Yeah. She and thinks Mr. that Mr. Collins is less easy to fool. Mm, Mr. Collins is wearing only a pair of white jogging shorts and a red bandana to keep his hair out of his eyes. Mm-hmm. Her gaze strays down to his bare, muscular chest, <laughs> which was deeply tanned and slick with perspiration. <laughs> um, and then... <laughs> well, this I, I, I think I messaged you about this. I bit. can't even deal with this. <laughs> so, she says that it's really hot. <laughs> or that she's really hot. Um, and she asks if she can have a drink. From... I imagine she says it in a voice like, I'm so hot. I'm so hot. Oh my God. Oh my God. But she asks if she can have a drink from the hose pipe. Ew. And I think I messaged you. I was like, who the fuck drinks water from a hose pipe? It would taste all rubbery. It's like a dog would drink water from a hose pipe. I would yeah. never... I'd be like... If she... If, you know, if... if like It's travelled through the whole pipe. If I was like Mr. Rubbery. Collins and Suzanne came up and said that, I'd be like, no, I'll get, you a, get, you, a I'll get you a glass of water. <laughs> You're not drinking water from a hose pipe. Yeah. She doesn't even know... That, that that hose pipe might not even be connected to the water inside. That could literally just be like an outside tap. This gross, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Well, obviously uh, we know what she's doing. So he hands it to her silently, uh, the host. <laughs> He's just um, like, knock yourself out. Go for it. 
And she laughs as the cool water bubbles over her lips and nose. She lets it dribble down her chin until her shirt is soaked and clinging to her. Yeah, this doesn't to sound seductive. No, it doesn't. This, it she sounds, sounds really deranged. Weird. It, she sounds absolutely deranged. Yeah, I agree. She's fucking dribbling, for God's sake. And then she... Like she she's dribbling and bubbles are, like, <laughs> dribbling down her face. You just be like... It sounds disgusting. You, she can't even drink water properly. Yeah. Like, what's wrong yeah. with you? She like, sounds like an idiot. She does look like an absolute fool. Uh, and especially when it, it then says that, um, obviously, she, she notices that Mr. Collins, like, gets some colour in his cheeks. Because he's, like, probably... I don't even know that it's, like, that he's, like feeling awkward about like he knows her. what she's doing he knows what she's doing and he just finds it really embarrassing and awkward yeah. like it's not like a thing but she smiles to herself so now she's she's stood there with a hose pipe <laughs> like water dribble down over, her chin dribble down her chin all <laughs> over her top and she's just smiling like yeah. a fucking mania yeah <laughs> she is like an actual mania and then she says oh would you look at that I'm all wet like <laughs> how cliche can you be I know like honestly <laughs> Oh, gross! And then uh, we we get the uh, the uh, well. We don't know because Suzanne's not sure. But is uh, Mister Collins kneels down to cut some grass and he mutters something under his breath that sounded like you know exactly what you're doing. Mm. Mm. But at this moment, the most adorable boy in this book turns up. <laughs> little teddy comes out of the house and apparently looks exactly like a child version of mr collins the <laughs> child version of robert redford yeah child robert redford we need to find a photo of um child robert redford yeah okay and post it and that that will be what teddy will look like okay well we will do that later <laughs> I'm sure we can find one i'm sure we can um yeah and he stares at suzanne like she's a movie star yeah well she's the most beautiful girl that has ever existed remember oh yeah i forgot um, and she tells him how lucky he is to have such a nice daddy. Yeah. Um, Mr. Collins draws back and thanks her for bringing the papers by. Yeah. Basically, like, you know, fuck off. Yeah. Get off my lawn. Yeah. She, um, she, her, her flirtations don't really work, but eventually he does blush um, and making her realize that maybe he's not so invincible after all. Mm. Maybe she can do something here. Back at the car, she tells Liz that Mr. Collins has been uh, telling her how great at writing Liz is. Yeah. And Todd says that Liz is a hard act for anyone to follow. Yeah. And Liz says, oh, you guys, if you don't stop it, my head won't fit through the car door. And Todd says jokingly, what head? Right. I don't get that. Why is that funny? (laughs) Is he saying she's got no head? It's not just that it's (laughs) funny. Paula, it's, it's not, not funny. It's not just that it's funny. Well, a, it's not funny. <laughs> but even if it was funny, right? So, let's just recap what just what was just said. So, Liz says that if they keep talking about her like this, her head's going to be so big that she won't be able to get out of the car. Todd responds saying, "What head? That is so fucking funny that Liz's sides are still hurting from <laughs> laughing by the time they get to the beach. I don't even get it. It's not even funny. It's, it's not even a joke. It's like it's a like remark. Some, I like, know. Like some in the like, you haven't got a head. Ha ha ha. It's something you'd expect from like, not even twins. A five-year-old. Like, sweet kids. Teddy. Yeah, Teddy. Um, they get to the beach and they join George and Enid um, and they're instantly surrounded by boys within <laughs> it's, minutes. It's so creepy. And then Aaron and Tom are fighting over who gets to rub sun cream on Suzanne's back. Yeah. Like, yeah, Suzanne doesn't get a say in this. No. They're just fighting amongst themselves. Well, of course she's loving it. Yeah. Bloody Suzanne. Um, And then, yeah, <laughs> go on, you can say it now. <laughs> so, apparently, the other morning, the Wakefields woke up to I Love You Susie written on their lawn in toilet paper. Which I think is probably the... I, I would just be furious if someone did that. I'd be like, Why have you covered the lawn in toilet... A toilet paper! Yeah. It's a bit creepy, really. Yeah, it's really romantic. It's not really romantic bother. either. Like, no, it's not. not using toilet all. paper. Like, do it in flowers or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> something a bit nicer than toilet paper. It's like a Halloween prank, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Enid... Um, and Liz both agree that Jess would be furious um, if she was here because, you know, obviously Suzanne's getting all of the male attention. And mm. they think it's probably a good thing that she won't be back um, until Suzanne's gone. Yeah. And in case you're wondering as well, um, 
Apparently, Winston's been dying ever since Mandy Farmer moved away. Oh. So they can't save the whales together. Mandy Farmer has moved away. Well, I like to think that she's moved away to save the whales. Ah, oh, maybe she has. Yeah. yeah, she's on. She's out in the ocean saving them. Yeah, why didn't Winston join her? <laughs> she's gone to Sea World to break in. Oh, amazing! She's an activist. Yeah, she's an activist. Um, and then they have some stupid banter with George and Todd, which I didn't even bother writing down. I don't know uh, if you've got any of it. I mean, Enid says that Suzanne's fine as long as she keeps her charm away from George and Todd. Uh, George and Enid then joke about George turning down Bo Derek the previous yeah. evening to go to the cinema of Enid. It's hilarious. Oh, hilarious stuff. Um, and then Todd basically tells him to shut the fuck up because he's trying to sunbathe. Um, and then they all decide to chuck him in the ocean. Yeah. And then Todd chases Liz down the beach um, and pretends to lasso her with a piece of seaweed. They are such a <laughs> That couple. was my favourite bit. Yeah, that was good. I, I, I had a funny image in my head. <laughs> yeah. Um, back at home... Uh, Jess calls from New York and she tells Liz that she's deliriously happy and it would take her 137 years to describe the Devlins mm. um, how fabulous they are yeah, and how sophisticated they are they're so fabulously rich that it will make you sick mm. and she says she's had a dinner party thrown in her honour and she's met a girl called Evelyn who's 16 but dating a 25 year old which is gross yeah. That was my first reaction was like, that's really weird. And rightfully, Liz's first reaction is that that sounds a bit strange. Yeah, it sounds more than a bit strange. It sounds fucked up. But Jess says she's inexperienced. <laughs> yeah, that made me laugh, though. Um, And then Jess tells her about Pete, but she doesn't tell her, her that he's Suzanne's boyfriend. No, no. Um... And uh, then we then get uh, we then get a great moment where Liz um, warns Jess about you know older guys, uh, reminding her about Scott Daniels, mm. who was the last guy to really mistreat Jess, um, as we know. Mistreat, try and rape, you try know, and rape, same yes, thing. Well, yeah, sorry, that was putting it mildly. <laughs> um, and then, don't minimize the issue. No, well, I'm certainly <laughs> not going to because it does. We will get there. Don't worry. Um, Jess says, you know, to Liz to stop being such a worry wart, mm. which is a phrase I've never heard before. I really, my mum says that. Okay, yeah. Um, and then Jessica says that Pete is crazy about her. Mm. But the truth is that she's homesick. Yeah. And she's hardly seen the Devlins. So we were taken back to the night of Evelyn's dinner party. Yes. Um, Evelyn is Suzanne's best friend. Yeah. So you can probably guess already that she's a fucking she's a bitch. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and her family live in one of the most exclusive streets in Manhattan. Oh she's a tall, sleek, sleek brunette. And she was wearing an outfit that looked like silk pyjamas. Great. <laughs> That's not a good look. Not to um, go out in. No. Nobody pays too much attention to Jess and they carry on with their conversations. And then a nasal voiced blonde says, Daddy says real estate makes more sense. If I put grandmother's inheritance into the stock market, I could lose everything. <laughs> and then a petite red haired girl pipes up that she's putting her money into diamonds. Oh my God. Um, Jess How much starts, money have you got? I know. Jess starts downing champagne. Uh, yeah, it just keeps coming. It keeps getting given to her and she just keeps keeps drinking the champagne. I'd be downing champagne if I was surrounded by these people. <laughs> yeah. Well, she gets so drunk that she can barely speak mm. um, and stumbles into a vase on the way to the toilet. Mm. Uh, before that, though, Evelyn does tell Jess that her parents always go to the Caribbean at this time of year. Yeah. And she usually stays at her boyfriend's apartment. Mm -hmm. um, and Jess can't believe that he has his own own apartment. And Evelyn says, well, he is 25. Yeah, I mean, he is, he uh, is a full grown adult. Boys our age are babies. And then a boy called Yeah, Malcolm. so are the girls. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> you and are then babies. A, and then you a boy shouldn't called, be dating a 25 year old. Uh, a boy called Malcolm pipes up from the couch <clears throat> and says that he's only 17, but he's old at heart. <laughs> um, and Evelyn whispers to Jess that Malcolm's okay because um, his family own an estate in Connecticut yeah, it's, and, he, it's, and he drives the Maserati. It's okay if he's young because so he's, okay. he's rich. Apart from him, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then dinner is served by the maid. And yeah, like you said, by the end of the meal, Jessica hammered. is hammered. Hammered. Um, she goes in search of the bathroom. She trips over an urn. She bumps into a table. Um and she hears a voice saying she obviously can't handle her liqueur. Yeah, and then someone else shouts. 
that they aren't surprised as she's from a little town in California. Yeah. Which I thought... How dare you slag Sweet Valley off? A, how dare you slag Sweet Valley off? And also B, what difference does where you come from make to you being able to hold your liquor? Yeah. It's like, what? Well, oh yeah, they, they don't, we know they drink in Sweet Valley. Mm. So. so she's obviously... Uh, Hor- like horrifically embarrassed. Yeah, um, yeah. She and she she goes into the bathroom and she passes out next to the toilet. It's classic. Relatable, isn't it? It's a classic first night of we, drinking. We've right? all we've all done that. Mm. Uh, the next thing she knew, she sprawled in the back of a cab going towards the Devlin's home. Oh dear, the shame. Mm. Uh, shall we go back to Sweet Valley? Let's go have you back. got anything else to add on that bit? No, I've got nothing else to add on that bit. Let's go back to Sweet Valley High. Okay. Back at the Wakefield's house. Um, Todd's got some last minute tickets to the Lakers game that night. But Liz is supposed to be babysitting Teddy. So uh, Suzanne says that she'll do it. And she, that she loves Teddy. Yeah, she's she's been creepily hanging around in the background yeah, and just overhearing her conversations. Listening to their conversation. Like, I couldn't help but overhear. Yeah. Um, so, of course, she says that Teddy's adorable and that she loves him. And she'd love to babysit. And Liz is like, oh, you can't possibly do that. And, you know, the same thing that Liz has been doing all the way through this book. Yeah, is like, you're oh, no, amazing. you can't do that. You're amazing. You can't do that. You're amazing. And it's like, no, OK. Um, but then, of course, Liz says, you know, maybe I should ring Mr. Collins first to check. Um, but Suzanne says there isn't really time. And she's mm. happy to do it. Yeah, um, and uh, Suzanne says it makes her happy to do things for other people. Yeah, but um, yeah, she shouldn't say what. No, happy to fuck your life up. So later that evening, or well, not later that evening. I guess an hour or so later, uh, Todd and Liz drop Suzanne off at Mister Collins' house. Hmm. Liz tells Suzanne to give Teddy a kiss from her, and she thinks it won't be Teddy I'll be kissing. Oh my goodness. So she so, knocks on. Sorry, go on. No, you're going to say the same thing I was. She knocks on the door of Mr. Collins' yellow house, and she, she undoes um, yeah. the top button of her blouse. Now yeah. I don't know how many fucking buttons are on this blouse because she yeah, keeps undoing on it more and more and more. <laughs> but yes, the first button comes off of the blouse. And, um, and Mr. Collins is shocked to see her. Yeah, because she actually she didn't call him like she said. No, no, no. She was talked out of it by Suzanne. Um. Yes. So Suzanne didn't call him. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And she tells um. She tells Mr. Collins Liz was going to let him know, but she forgot. Yeah. And he says that that doesn't sound like Liz. Um. And he says I don't like last minute changes, but it's too late to change the plans now. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be home by twelve thirty, and I want Teddy in bed by eight thirty. Yeah. She makes sure to brush up against Mr. Collins just to make him really oh, uncomfortable for no reason. They were stood in the doorways. Like, this is yeah. just, like, needless. It's not even like she brushed past him to get in. She just literally brushes up yeah. against him like a weirdo. <laughs> um, And then as soon as Mr. Collins goes, uh, she's just, awful. just treats Teddy like crap. I love Teddy, right? I love him. He sounds like the sweetest <laughs> little kid, right? So he comes in and he asks Suzanne, if she knows the story of Theodore the Turtle. Aww. And Suzanne says she doesn't know any stories. She's like, I don't know any stories. Don't know any stories. <laughs> and uh, uh, Teddy says that Liz knows lots of stories. Mm, of course she does. She just mm. makes them up off the top Suzanne of her head. Suzanne says she isn't Liz. Mm. Uh, and she tells him basically to bugger off and watch TV. Yeah. And then she and then she disappears into Mr. Collins' bedroom. Yeah, she's, yeah she says she'll, she'll see him later and, and leaves him. Um, so she, uh, yeah, she heads up to Mr. Collins' room. And just starts going through all of his stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then when she doesn't find anything interesting, she decides to take a bath. What the actual fuck? Yeah, yeah. So basically she goes through all of his stuff in his room. Apparently she loves looking through private, uh, mm. people's private stuff. She's like, um someone on come dine with me. <laughs> that's, that's another English reference. Um, yeah. And yeah, so then she has... A bath. She's Teddy by now is presumably left on his own down there for like hours. Yeah. Right. She thinks maybe he'll come home and find me in the tub. Oh, like in the goodness. movies. <laughs> what movies? Yeah, what movies? Actually, I don't, I don't want to know actually pornos, what movies. Like... Um Yeah, and by the time she she takes a really long bath and then it's past eleven PM. 
Yeah. <laughs> and she finds poor Teddy. Poor Teddy. She finds him asleep on the sofa looking red and blotchy like he'd been crying. Yeah, because before she went upstairs, he um he he said that, you know, he thought they were friends and she's just like, you know, I'm going mm. upstairs. Bye. See you later. So he's just been all that time from like 8:30 until no, he's meant to be in bed at 8:30. All that time, like hours and hours just been crying on the sofa until he fell asleep. Yeah. Poor little Teddy. Um, but she doesn't care. No. And then she goes around turning all the lights off in the house. Fucking weirdo. <sighs> Apart from a table lamp. Yeah. Uh, and she puts on soft romantic music. And undoes another <laughs> button. Yeah. Um, and then she just waits for Mr. Collins. She like, like, like pretends to fall asleep. Psycho. Right? Yeah. 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 She pretends to fall asleep. Um, she's, and a, she's a psycho. She is an, an actual absolute psycho. psycho. She's an actual psycho. Um, and of course, Mr. Collins eventually comes home. God knows how long she's been lying there. Um, yeah. <laughs> and apparently she continues to play dead when he's trying to wake her up. Mm. And she enjoys the feeling of him being near her. Mm. Um, and then uh, she pretends to be startled. Yeah. And wakes up. Um, and then she says, oh, you scared me. And then she grabs his hand and puts it on her boob. Yeah, great. <laughs> and says, uh, can you feel how fast my heart is beating? And Mr. Collins just basically says, like, it's late and you should probably get home. Yeah. And she says, oh, I won't mind a glass of wine. Um, and he tells her she's too young. Which, as Jess will, uh, will definitely yeah. say Jess at this will point, warn you, about that. You, you are too young. Um, but then she wraps her arms around his neck and she presses against him. Um, and she says, oh, it's okay. I won't kiss and tell. Yeah, Mr. Collins is clearly uncomfortable at this point. Yeah. And he actually tells her to stop. Mm. And he says uh, he'll go and wait for her in the car. Yes. Um, so she's... She, she it says as well that she, she basically opens her mouth ready for him to kiss her and leans back and then says, oh, Roger. <laughs> and then like as he's like basically prying her off of it, <laughs> prying him off of her, she sounds mental. I know. Like properly mental. <coughs> Yeah, this is insane. It's insane. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. So he goes and waits for her in the car, but uh, she's furious and she tells him that she knows that he wants her. Yeah. But he says she's playing a very foolish game. Um, and she hisses that he'll be sorry. Yeah. And she says that she'll walk home. Yes, so she does. She walks home. Um, and uh, as she approaches the Wakefield house, the last of those buttons are coming off. Yeah. She rips the blouse. Yeah, she comes up with a plan on the way home. Mm. So uh, she rips her blouse and then she plans to tell everybody that he's attacked her. Yeah. Hoping that this causes him to lose his job. Yeah. Um, which to me, I was like, he could lose a lot more than his job here. Yeah. Like, so she musters up tears and she heads up to Liz's room. Yeah. And to be continued. Yes, we're going as we back go to New York. To New York. I quite like this going back from place to place. I was going to say at the end, this is, uh, I think this is probably my favourite book in, in terms of like both stories are really interesting. Yeah. And I like that we go between the two. Yeah. Um, it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. So we head to Central Park with Pete in a horse drawn mm. carriage. Very romantic, as, uh, as Jess says. Yeah. But he says that it's too touristy for him. Yeah. Um. And that uh, he's got the. De- uh, she says she's got the Devlins to thank for this, as they called him and asked him to take her out for the day. Which, of <laughs> course, really hurts Jess. Yeah. Because she thought that when he phoned, it was for a date. Yeah. Uh, but they've basically just sta- asked him to do do it as a favor. Yeah. It's like, oh, can you look after this fucking kid? Yeah. Uh, but she snuggles closer to him, and um, she says, "If this were a movie, we'd be kissing now." Yeah. Like, she's acting so desperate. She's well over the top. Um, Pete responds asking if he always sees herself, uh, if she always sees herself as a movie star. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, Bob, yes, is the answer. But she says it depends on the leading man. Um, and of course, Pete asks what kind of man she has in mind. Mm. And she just describes him, basically. Yeah, she's basically like, his name is Pete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's got green eyes and a sexy smile and he's tall and dark and handsome. Hmm. <laughs> Um, and then she says, I've got someone in mind, but I'm not sure if he's interested. And he says, how could anyone resist you, little Jessica? Yeah, which also annoys Jessica. Yeah. And she says she's not so little. Mm. Uh, back at the Devlin's house, he offers her a drink. 
It's like in someone else's home. It's not even his house. This is He's like the theme of this. The theme of this book is like stealing things that don't belong to you. Yeah. Um, and uh, he tells her he knows where Mrs. Devlin keeps the keys to the, the liquor cabinet. Mm. Um, and she takes a gulp of brandy and she nearly chokes. I'm not surprised. Yeah, presumably the first time she's taken brandy and she just she just gulps it. I think I'd like choke if I did that. <laughs> um, and then he turns the lights off and starts kissing her. Yes. So before she knows it, he's next to her in the dark, kissing her. And Jess can't believe it. She's mm. eager over the moon. But then it very quickly becomes a nightmare. Yeah, it becomes obvious that he wants a bit more than kissing. Yeah, he's not cool um, and calm anymore. He's out of control. Yeah, yeah. He pins her down onto the couch and she asks him to stop, but he says, uh, this is what you wanted, yeah. not so little Jessica. Forcibly kissing you... her uh, in a way that makes that scares her, basically. Mm. Um, he's got his hands on her knee and a rib. Um, she twists and says no. She literally, like, yeah. Tries to twist out of this. She screams uh, and he tells her to grow up and that she isn't playing in the sandbox anymore. Mm. And then, for fuck's sake, I don't know if you picked up on this. So then again, exactly like she did when Scott Daniels was trying to rape her. Oh, this was... Fuck- she, Do you uh, know, this was a very serious moment until this bit. I know. And then I, I laughed out loud So in all bit, night long, she did the not- same thing. I'm sure this wasn't the uh, intention in this very serious yeah. scene, but it actually made me laugh. It's so ridiculous. So again, she thinks to herself how mad she is at Elizabeth yeah. for switching places with her and how it's all Elizabeth's fault she she's thinks, in this situation. She thinks that Liz must have known that it would turn out this way. That's yeah. what she thinks. Like, she thought she must have known that someone was going to try and sexually assault whoever went. So I can't she remember why instead. she... She blamed Liz in All Night Long, but she had a reason. It was the, it was the same thing in All Night Long. In All Night Long, it was because Liz didn't talk Jess out of going on a walk in the woods with Scott alone. Yeah. And then in this, it's that apparently she had she had like some kind of could see into the future and knew yeah. that whoever went was going to get assaulted, so she let Jess go instead. Mm. Um. She tells him she'll call the police if he doesn't leave, but he says, uh, "Tell them what." That I attacked you after you invited me up here to an empty apartment. Yes. Uh, yes. She's And also, that will work. I think the police will believe you because she's 16 and you're like mm. 20 or something. Um, And that you begged me to kiss you but changed your mind. Again, yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, that that, that is perfectly yeah. reasonable grounds. Yeah. Um, he says he'll leave after he's given her the goodnight kiss she deserves. And he lunges at her. A brandy glass falls off of the table and smashes oh, onto the floor. And then suddenly the lights come on and Mr. and Mrs. Devlin are in the doorway looking horrified at the sight of them wrestling on the floor. But then it's never fucking mentioned again. Like Mr. and Mrs. Devlin, Suzanne, nobody mentions this incident again. It's the one, the biggest problem with this book. Uh, I I thought they were going to come back to this. It was going to be resolved. Something was going to come up. It's never mentioned again. It's never brought up again. We don't know what happened to Pete. We don't know if... Her, Nothing. If I Suzanne's imagine. parents chastised him, if if they, you know, yeah, like, like what a happened? Six, a sixteen-year-old's been left in your care. Yeah, you you've basically found a twenty-year-old wrestling with her on the floor. A twenty-year-old <laughs> that should be dating your your daughter, your daughter yeah. is now trying yeah. to assault her. Your your you know the girl that's in your, your care. house guest. Yeah, unbelievable. And it, yeah, it never comes up again, which is Ugh. the biggest. <laughs> Aside so from stupid. this, I thought the book was great, but this... My parents was... would go mental. Yeah, of course. Well, any parent, any my... adult would go mental, right? I mean... If, one, if like, you know, yeah. Oh, but anyway. anyway, back to Sweet Valley High. Yeah. Suzanne is trembling on Liz's bed with her torn blouse, messed up hair, smudged eye makeup. Mm. Um, she tells Liz she's too ashamed to tell her what happened and that nobody will believe her. No. But uh, Liz promises that she will. Yeah. Which is a bad promise to make. Hmm. So she says, um, Mr. Collins tried to, um, I mean, he, oh, I can't say it. Yeah, Um, he seemed very nice at first. mm. Liz starts to feel sick. Yeah. She tells Liz that he came home drunk and offered her some wine. (laughs) This is such bullshit. Yeah, I know. Oh, she turns everything around. Everything. Um, And she told him she was too young to drink wine. And he said, you seem pretty grown up to me. And then he started trying to unbutton her blouse. So yes, literally the opposite. It's it's everything everything that happened. She switched around. 
Yeah. Um, so that it makes her look like it was Mr. Collins doing everything she did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then she says that she ran home. Um, so Liz says that they have to tell their parents, obviously. Of course, yeah. Um, she goes to wake them up, but uh, she's got a nagging voice in her head saying, like, you know, this this can't This be isn't true. Mr. Collins. Yeah, yeah, you know Mr. Collins. Yeah. Um, but yeah, of course, um, you know, Suzanne also worries that they're not going to believe her. Um, and Liz says, you know, how couldn't they believe you? You're the sweetest person in the whole world. Hmm. And hugs her. Um, so, yeah, uh, of course, Liz is distraught as she goes to tell her parents. Like, Mr. Collins is like her mentor. Like, later on, I think she describes him as like an older brother to her. Like, Mr. Collins means a lot to she her. She fancies him. She, yeah. She definitely yeah. fancies him. I mean, him. I wasn't going to go there, but yeah, she clearly does. Um, but yeah, uh, of course, um, you know, she has to tell her parents. There's also no mention in this book of them telling the Devlins what happened either. No. And then I guess the Devlins don't tell them as well. It's that their, like no, their daughter's no boyfriend tried to rape Jessica. Maybe that was the... Uh, the, the His uh, parents are useless. Maybe that's what happened in the end. They phoned and they were both like, oh, well, all that happened to both of them was fine. <laughs> but we're equal. Out, it's fine, we're equal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll send her back at Christmas. <laughs> um, yeah, the parenting in this book is it's so awful. bad. I mean, the parenting in this, these books are usually yeah. quite bad, but it's in this one particularly. Bad in this one. Um, because it gets even worse. So a couple of days later, they're in Todd's car, um, Elizabeth and Todd are in Todd's car, and Todd says that it just doesn't make sense, uh, because the news is all over Sweet Valley by now. Well, you can imagine now how much worse this story has become as well, because the Sweet Valley rumour mill, as we know, will create anything out of nothing and this is actually something actually something you know, yeah this is this is probably blown out of all proportion yeah remember when they know. thought ken was having an affair with miss dalton i know and now this is probably <laughs> that like, was literally like came from nothing yeah this is probably like oh my god mr collins tried to murder her yeah. as well and you know it's probably gone <laughs> she's crazy. pregnant with his child yeah, she's pregnant with his child yeah yeah um so this gets even worse yeah so ned has been to see mr cooper who yes. notified the school board but not um, the fucking police yeah and that's how everyone found out yeah, but no one's gone to the police about no, it. No, nobody's gone to the police. Or if they have, there's no mention in this book. It's just like they told the school board and he might lose his job, but no one's going to go to the police about the fact that this man tried to assault a 16-year-old girl. Yeah. Um, he just gets suspended while they investigate, I think it says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Liz can't bring herself to hate Mr. Collins and she was glad Todd felt the same. Um, Mr. Collins had told Ned he was upset... But that he wasn't going to publicly deny it, Which is because thing. people like, would what? believe what they wanted anyway. Yeah, they would. But you still, you still have deny to, it, wouldn't you? You still have to say I didn't do you it. You didn't yeah, do I know. it. I mean, not denying it just makes you look absolutely guilty. You're it does just make you sit look there worse. and just be like, okay, yeah. I'm not going to say like what. Yeah, Todd says that sounds like something Mr. Collins would say. What well, something <laughs> idiotic? Yeah. Um, worse still, apparently, quite a few people are actually happy that this has happened yeah. to Mr. Collins. Apparently they think that his teaching method- methods are too liberal um, and that they hated how popular he is with all the kids. So, like, some people are actually loving the fact that this horrible charge has been brought Yeah, some of him. the parents. Yeah, horrendous. Um, but then, so, Todd, said, uh, you know, asks what Mr. Collins has said about it. And as you said, he, he Ned spoke to him and, and wouldn't he wouldn't say... He wouldn't deny it because people are going to believe what they're going to believe. But Liz also says, quote, this is a quote, Mr. Collins seemed pretty upset. Well, yeah, you would be, like, wouldn't you? Fucking understatement, Liz. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh, wow. He You'd seemed be devastated. A, yeah, a pretty upset. He seemed pretty upset about it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, they're actually... Um, She's a writer and she couldn't think of anything better to yeah, say than pretty that. Upset. pretty upset. Um... They're actually on their way to Lila's house to meet some kids from school. Um, sorry, not Lila's house, Cara's Cara's house. Cara's house, because they're going to they're um, gonna get a collection and stuff together for uh, Lila's party. Yeah, which apparently is that night. Like, I know. You, you think like, you would have arranged this, this by now. Second. I know. Because they're also planning on getting her a gift, which they still haven't got. Um, yeah. Because that money, we will find out in a minute. But so they're on the way to pull their money. Together. Literally on the day of the party uh, yeah. to then go and find something to buy for the party and yeah. arrange. Yeah. Um, Liz doesn't want to go. Of course um, not. She doesn't even like these people. No. She doesn't, I don't think she even really likes Kara. I know they've talked occasionally. I yeah. don't think Liz likes Kara. She certainly doesn't like Lila. 
Uh, but Suzanne has uh, told Aaron Dallas that she's going to be his date for Lila's party. Um, so, Which yes. I thought, again, would be really fucking suspicious. A girl that's just been assaulted yeah. is now like, oh yeah, I'll go on a date with this <clears> guy. <throat> it just all seems really dodgy to me already. It's like, hang on a minute, guys, come on. Mm. Um, and she wanted to make sure that Suzanne's last night in Soup Valley was fun. And then suddenly, Todd smacks the steering wheel I love and bit. says, what if... Mr. Collins is telling the truth. Yeah. What I if love Suzanne Todd. made it all up? Yeah. Um, and Liz says, why would she do something so awful? Because she's a bitch. And then Todd's like, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I like that, that they're, they're questioning it, though. And, and you know, Liz obviously is yeah. conflicted herself. Mm. Todd's great in this book, by the way. I like Todd in this book. He's great in most books, but yeah. in this one he's really good. Um. And then uh, on Cara's patio, the kids are divided. Yeah, into so two camps. Frizzy-haired Olivia. <laughs> that's what they call her. Yeah. Frizzy-haired Olivia says she doesn't believe that she doesn't believe Suzanne. No. Uh, but Cara says that he's always seemed like the lecherous type. Plus, he gave me a D in my last English test. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like... that, 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 that's that then, isn't it? He must be a Guilty. rapist because he gave me yeah. a D in the, in, the, in my uh, in my hmm. essay. Uh, Ken defends him. Yep. Uh, good old Ken. And John Pfeiffer says that they should hear Mr. Collins' side before they yeah. decide if he's guilty. John's being reasonable. He's like, I'll hear both sides of this well, story. Well, he bloody would be. Well, of course. He's the sports editor. No, you oh, you don't know. I'm not going to spoil oh, it. Oh, no. But uh, I've had two messages from listeners actually saying, like, wait until you find out what John... Oh, no. What John Pfeiffer does. Oh, my God. Yeah, I he, have no idea. He, uh, so, would... to be clear, if there are new listeners, I have not read... I mean, yeah. I've heard some things that you've told me in the past. Like, I know, like, Suzanne comes back, for example. I know that. But I don't know the story. So well, I... in about 50 books' time, <laughs> in about two years, you'll find out what I'm talking about. Oh, my God. John, no. <laughs> um, but we don't like John. John's a bad man. There's a really weird moment in this as well, where, um, you know, after Kara says about the um, giving her a D on, on an essay and stuff, um, Todd and Liz look at each other and they both think that um, it was probably Kara that spread the story around Sweet Valley. And I was like, well, it probably. was obviously going to be Caroline Pierce, not Kara. Yeah. Uh, um, Caroline Pierce says, actually, yeah. she says it's disgusting that a maniac has been on the loose at Sweet Valley High. A maniac. Disgusting. Um, and then Tom McKay sniggers. Uh, but Winston says it's not a laughing matter. No. And of course, Winston, poor, silly Winston, he's jumping to Suzanne's side. He's obviously infatuated mm. with her. Um, and he says he wishes he was there to protect her. Yeah. He suggests that they um, use part of the money for Lila's present to buy Suzanne a gift as well. For fuck's sake. <laughs> well, that's a nice idea, though, given that they don't know, do they? No. So it's, it's quite a sweet thing to It just suggest. irritated me. Um, and I do, well, the thing I do like about it is that they all agree that Lila's rich as fuck anyway, so she probably doesn't need the, you yeah. know, the gift. Um, That's not the point. No, I know it's not. Um, Liz says she knows a blouse that Suzanne said she liked. Mm. And then oh, she, Liz also <clears throat> decides to use the money she's been saving towards a new lavalier on um, a scarf for Suzanne as well. Yeah. Oh, so, so ironic. It's it's ironic and also it, it immediately ironic? immediately made me think how long has it been? Like how long has this been? So in like a couple of days, maybe like a week since the the incident. Since um the lavalier disappeared. Oh yeah. Like how has she saved any yeah. money? She you doesn't don't, have a job. Work. She doesn't yeah. work and I'm like it's been like a week max. Like yeah. what, where did you get this money from that you're saving yeah. up? Yeah. I guess maybe it's money she already had that she was going to put towards the lavalier. Mm. Um, then later on, um, Suzanne is ready for the party. Of course, she's admiring her perfect self in the mirror. She's wearing an off-the-shoulder white satin dress. Mm. And Liz thinks that if she wore that, she'd look like a high school junior masquerading as Princess Diana. <laughs> um, but Suzanne looked great in it. And Liz's outfit, what the fuck? <laughs> well, it's Liz, isn't it? I mean, come Liz on. has gone for a velvet skirt, a high-necked lace Victorian blouse with a, and a French braid in her hair into which she tucked a sprig of honeysuckle. <laughs> it just sounds awful. She sounds like some kind of... She sounds like she's going to one of those like steampunk festivals or something. Yeah, you know it sounds I mean? like fancy dress or yeah. something, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. 
Um, it sounds like it's like a ghost, <laughs> like a Victorian ghost from like a Charles Dickens film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, um, Suzanne again says that she feels like Liz is her sister. Yeah. Um, and Liz is all tearful as Suzanne Ugh. thinks that Liz is a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she basically does think that. Um, she thanks Liz for helping her to make sure Mr. Collins got what he deserved. Yeah. And then Liz then Liz notices her eyes narrow into mean slits oh. um, and hatred. Um, briefly. Hatred, briefly. Hatred twists her mouth into an ugly grimace. She's a reptile. She's a reptile. She's a shape-shifting reptile. <laughs> but then Liz thinks, Suzanne could never look so ugly. I must have imagined it. Like, why would you imagine it? That was literally her facial expression that just happened in front of you. Like, <laughs> No, I imagined it. Didn't yeah, she didn't rate that face. Didn't, I just imagined it. it. Yeah, I just imagined it. It's fine. Um, and then Liz decides to... Uh, no, Suzanne uh, leaves, leaves. Yeah, with She leaves Aaron. the room because she's ready and Aaron's yeah. here to pick her up. And Liz decides to slip the gifts into her suitcase so she can find them while she's packing. Yes, the, the suitcase is lying on the bed partially mm. open because it's her last night. Yeah. What does she find in the suitcase? Well, she opens the suitcase to put the gift in and she sees uh, something twinkle, something mm. sparkle. She catches her eye. And it's the lavalier. Yeah. And apparently Liz's stomach did a slow cartwheel in disbelief. Mm. She fastens the necklace around her neck and she hurries down to meet Todd. Yes. Um, so Todd asks Liz what's wrong and guess what? I can't I believe I this. I've, all caps. I've, I've written, written in all caps on this. So have I. So have I. So Liz asks, Todd asks Liz what's wrong and she just tells him what's wrong. I have put Liz... Todd asks yeah. what's wrong and then she all in caps him. and Liz tells him. She actually tells Todd. Yeah, she actually just tells him. No, no, like, oh, nothing. I can't talk I about it. Know. I don't want to talk about it. It's I a can't secret. Say. It's a secret. Like, she just she nothing, just tells him. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. No, yeah. she actually, for the first time in like 10, 11 books now, <laughs> she actually tells Todd the goddamn I'm glad truth. you noticed this too. Yeah, I was, I was over the moon. When I read this bit, I was like, <laughs> finally, finally happened. Um, and then she she says that Suzanne, uh, she says if Suzanne lied about the necklace, maybe she lied about Mr. Collins. Yeah, yeah. But then she says, oh, I know my writer's imagination runs away with me sometimes. Well. So I don't know what to think. I don't know, might curse my writer's imagination. This damn writer's imagination. Um, but Todd, of course, reminds Liz of the story of uh, Kathy in east of eden no, uh, I don't, uh, a yeah. beautiful woman who was you know lovely and everyone thought was brilliant but was actually rotten to the core mm-hmm. um and they also uh bring up about jess lying in the past uh, which of course liz doesn't like no this is like oh no jess is jess would never do anything like this though, which mm. is true she wouldn't go this far yeah um and then she suggests that they take a detour to mr collins house and toss said- actually she did go this far with todd didn't she what? literally try to make out that Todd... Yeah, she did. She literally did go and this double far. double love. She actually did yeah. go this <laughs> God. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Um, Liz suggests that they may, they take a detour to Mr. Collins' house on the way to the party. Yeah. And Todd says he thought she'd never ask. Yeah. I love Todd in this book. He's great. I know. Um, but I, I thought, would a female student like be allowed to visit Mr. Collins' house? It's well, really high, sure. He's under investigation for attempted rape. <laughs> I mean, yeah, in Sweet Valley, it's fine. They're probably going to make, they could make things worse for him. Of course they could, really? by turning up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I guess she is going with Todd, um, which is something. And of course, then no one's told the police. So at this point, yeah, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Just turn up, rock up. So when they get there, he's a pale shadow of the man that Liz knows. Oh no, he hasn't had a shave or anything. No. Um, he invites them in and she just asks him outright if it's true. Yeah. And he asks her what she thinks. And she shakes her head. You are being very evasive, Mr. Collins. Can you just answer the question, yeah. please? I know, we won't deny it still. <laughs> like, everyone's asked you and you're still not denying it. Hmm. This is concerning. She knows in her heart that he hadn't done it. Yeah. Um, Liz says she thought Suzanne was a friend. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. and Mr. Collins says she's a very mixed up young lady. 
I'd be calling her more than a very mixed up young lady. Well, if I was he Mr. also Collins. says that he's not angry with her anymore. Yeah. He says he was angry with her, but she's obviously is obviously because of her rubbish upbringing and and she's been. I'd be you know, bloody angry. Like I would be like. I'd be fuming. So angry at this point. I mean, the, her whole life is ruined at this point, right? Yeah. I mean, the whole town believes you're you're guilty of this because of the rumors and because you're stupid to not even deny it and just let the rumors happen. Um, you know, you're going to lose your school. You, I mean, he could lose his son over this, right? Yeah. I mean, this is really serious. Yeah. This is really, but he's fine about it. He's just really zen about it and just like, mm. oh well, you know, it's not her fault. But Liz isn't zen about it. No, I tell you what, Liz, the from like the end of this book now, from the point that she tells Todd in the car, right up to the end. Liz is a goddamn hero now. Liz is <laughs> awesome at the end of this book. This might be the best. I never thought I'd hear you say that. No, but she does because she is she's great at this party. I was mm. really pleased. She promises Mr. Collins that Suzanne won't get away with this. Yeah. Um. So cut to the party. Yes, cut to Aaron telling Winston to just fuck off because yeah. he keeps coming up to Suzanne. He's like, <laughs> "Look, she's with me. Go away." Mm-hmm. And Suzanne thinks she's glad to be rid of the big goon. Yes. Uh, but she says to Aaron that she's worried about hurting his fe- Winston's feelings. Of course she's because um, she's so sweet and innocent. Whilst calling him like a big goon in her head. Yeah. Um, and Aaron says he wanted to be alone with her on her last night. Mm. And she thinks to herself that all this attention almost makes up for the way Mr. Collins treated me. But I won't be yes. happy until he's lost his job. <laughs> and then Liz and Todd breeze in. Suzanne thinks Todd looks especially handsome in his blue pinstripe sports jacket. Yeah. And maybe next year she'll see what she can do with him. Yeah, on the next visit. Leave him alone, you bitch. Uh, Liz starts walking towards her and Suzanne notices that Liz is not smiling. No. She also notices the lavely air. Mm. The little sneak, she thinks. Why is she a sneak? Because she went... Taking back her own jewellery. She went into her her, uh, suitcase and got her property back. Mm -hmm. What a bitch. Um, Liz asks Suzanne to talk in private. So they go to the cloakroom. Um, and she tells Suzanne where she found the necklace. And Suzanne plays dumb. She tries to. Yeah. She says, oh, maybe it was uh, caught on the sleeve of my uh, my sweater that I packed away. Yeah. Um, but Liz isn't buying it. And I love it. Because for once, Liz would normally be like, oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like normal Liz would be like, oh, yeah, maybe. But no, she's not having no. any of this. And she actually says to her straight up, she's like, can't you think of a better excuse? Than that? Yeah. You know, I love it. Liz is actually being good in this book. Uh, Suzanne praise turns on you. the tears then. Yeah, of course. And Liz says, Mr. Collins was right about you. Yeah. Uh, and that does it. Suzanne's eyes narrow. Yeah, um, she grabs her and apparently digs her nails into, mm. into Liz's shoulder. Um, as she says, like, who's going to believe you? Yeah. She says, uh, did that lecherous creep say that I was the one who tried to seduce him? Mm. And then she says, so what if he did say it? He wanted it. Yeah. And he would have gone through with it if he wasn't such a saint. Yeah. And um, of course, Liz says, well, thanks for telling me. I'm going to tell everyone else. Yeah. But Suzanne says, well, if you do, then what happened to Mr. Collins will seem like nothing compared to what I'll do to you. Yeah. And, you know, Liz walks off uh, to find Todd, I think. Um, Mm. And Suzanne basically tries to do the thing that I've been saying could potentially happen to Liz (laughs) since she had her accident. (laughs) She She goes up to Cara and... And basically, my theory of her being one head injury away from <laughs> completely changing again, that's what Suzanne does. She says, oh, Cara, can you remember that bike accident? And Cara's like, oh, my God, how could I forget? It was so awful. And, you know, she's like, well, do you remember how much Liz changed after that? Yeah. Well, I think I saw Liz hit her head the other day. And ever mm. since then, she's been coming out with these crazy theories. And she's such a good friend of mine. I'm really concerned about her because she doesn't even seem to like me anymore. She's making up all these rumours. I think she's changed because of the head injury. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously, because it's Kara, that, That's enough. that spreads. Yep. She's um, immediately off to Lila. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, yeah. and then Caroline Pierce grabs Enid and asks her, what's wrong with Liz? Mm. And Enid says, uh, she's got no idea what she's talking about. And Caroline says, you should keep a close eye on her. Um, and you should be more sensitive to her problems as her best friend. Yeah. Um, and then Enid, Enid starts bloody, like, crying. I know. So, God. <laughs> it's a bit overdramatic. Yeah. Just go and see your friend. 
So she goes to find Liz and she tells her what people are saying. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Liz marches up to Suzanne in front of everyone. I love it. Yeah. And she, she says, says stop, uh, stop spreading rumors. Yeah. And uh, of course, Suzanne like uses Liz's anger to make her look, look bad. Yeah. And a, a crowd is forming. And starts there. being patronizing. Yeah. And she gives Bruce um, a see what I mean look. Mm-hmm. like oh here she goes you know i told you i told you she was crazy well and of course bruce would know all about that yeah um she tells liz in a patronizing voice um he's like i think you should go home and lie down because you did hit your head pretty hard on the pool yeah and liz says she didn't even go to me yesterday mm. um and suzanne and suzanne then turns that around and says she's, and forgotten. Says she's got amnesia yeah yeah um and um, Liz tells everyone about the necklace. Yeah, she says about the theft. Mm. She says that Mr. Collins was right about her. Yeah. And, you know, and then um, a crowd has gathered even more. Mm. And then Winston comes along. I love Winston. The hero of so the book. He comes along jostling his way through the crowd and he's carrying a cup of punch. Yeah. And he offers it to Suzanne. And then he trips up and he spills it all over her Princess Diana dress. Oh, my God. She calls him a dumb clod mm. and uh, basically loses her shit. Yeah. Um, saying that, you know, she's sick of him being obsessed with her. and um, She calls him a big stupid dog. Yeah. And of course, you know, the, the mask has slipped. Mm. And then she realizes that everyone's staring and then she tries to pretend she was joking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but nobody's uh, buying that. Um and then she asks Aaron if he'll take her home to get changed. I love this bit. And he just looks at her in disgust and yeah, walks he, away. He, he looks at her covered in punch and just says, that look suits you, and <laughs> walks off. And then she cries the first real tears she's cried in a very long time. Yeah. And of course, Liz thanks Winston for the best timed accident mm. ever. But of course. I love it. Winston, the fucking lad, <laughs> says he overheard everything in the coat room. And he did it on purpose. Yeah, it wasn't an accident. It was not an accident. So amazing. Liz, of course, says... I didn't see that coming. I, I didn't know. I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. Winston, well done. Um, uh, of she course... kisses him on the cheek and Todd comes over. Um, yeah. And and Todd says to Winston, you're lucky I'm not the jealous type. Kill like, you fucking guy. are the yeah, jealous type. You are type. the jealous type. You <laughs> You'll kill that guy. Are. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> are the jealous type. I think he just means you're lucky that I don't find you threatening in any way. Yeah, because you're such a, a clod. A clod, yes. You're such a, what was it she called him? A, go- uh, a big goon. A dumb clod. Uh, dumb big... clod, stupid dog, big yeah. goon. Yeah. The names go on. <laughs> Um, and then this is so stupid. Liz, yeah. Liz says, "Like, and we've got enough witnesses to save Mr. Collins' job." You have Hooray. You've got the, these are two. These are not mutual. No, these are mutually these aren't exclusive. connected events. Like, just because she lost it with Winston, she could be the biggest bitch on the planet. Yeah, but still have been assaulted. These two. And things- the police will be like, "Oh, someone threw a drink." over her and she flipped out yeah i mean the only way that this works is because it's in sweet valley and no one informed the police in the first place and yeah none of this is actually legally binding or anything but it is ridiculous it's like this doesn't prove anything no. for the innocence of it proves that she's a bitch to winston specifically and that she stole from you yeah it doesn't prove anything about mr collins um but of course the rumor mill now will go in the other direction and it will be oh my god this all you know it was mm-hmm. Suzanne. She did it all. You know, she attacked Mr. Collins. And, yeah, probably. You know. Um, and then Jessica arrives home uh, from New York. Yeah. And um, she's mad at Liz for not meeting her at the airport. But Liz says, oh, I just didn't feel like the ride. Um, and she thinks that Kara can tell Jess what happened because she doesn't, can't she's bother to say it. She's done. I mean, you fucking tell her. Like, you wouldn't leave her to hear it secondhand from, from like, one of the school gossips. I would be like, you would tell her. That, you will not believe. Yeah, no matter how you tired you were, you would, you would oh, tell her. I would be all over this. I'd be like, you won't believe what happened while you were gone. And if you didn't, then the parents would. Mr. and Mrs. Wakefield would have told her in the car on the well, way back from the Well, Mr. and Mrs. Wakefield, you say that, but she they invite her back. I know. So, like, I don't even understand that. I, I mean, I guess we'll get to that when she comes back, right? But I'm, I'm like, how do you invite this person back after knowing yeah. all of this? Yeah, spoiler, she's going to come back at Christmas. Which I Happy can't Christmas. wait for now. I cannot <laughs> wait for that. Um, But yeah, um, so 
Liz uh, didn't want to be in the car with Suzanne, basically. I don't blame her. Um, so she hadn't, and she hadn't even bothered to say goodbye to her. No. Um, and then Liz asked Jess about the guy that she met. Yes. Um, and when Jess says he was called Pete, Liz grins. She realizes um, who it was. Yeah. And Jess is confused because she's like, well, I thought she was Suzanne's friend. Why is she happy about me no. trying on with her boyfriend? He was not Suzanne's friend. He was Suzanne's boyfriend. Mm. But yeah, Jess um, leaves out the, the bit about the rape as well. Yeah, you which know. I was a bit like, mm, really? You're Nobody's not telling ta- They're back to not telling each other things again. Yeah, we're back <laughs> to not telling each other things. And uh, She basically wants to save face and pretend like New York was amazing. But I yeah. think the fact that you were nearly assaulted probably takes precedent over you trying to hide that New York was Well, amazing. again, like we said earlier, the Devlins would have let the Wakefields know if this was real. And, and vice versa. probably would have been and, involved. And, and we never hear what happened with the Devlins finding them. Did they, did they take Pete? to the police so did they like what happened probably not it, it's never some it, we never They're find probably like, oh you kids yeah oh, you <laughs> crazy kids wrestling on the floor um and then jess sees the unopened uh, blouse and scarf on the dresser and she assumes it's presents for her yeah so she starts tearing the paper off and liz sighed because she planned to take them back to the shop for a refund <laughs> <laughs> too late um and then later on jessica says that Stephen barely said a word in the car well yes yeah, so steven's been moping Throughout this mm. book, there's been moments where Stephen's been Every moping. Every few pages, and... they drop in like, Stephen's moping. Yeah, thinking about Trisha. Mm. Um, and Jess, uh, Liz says he's upset because Trisha's blow- been blowing him off lately. Mm. And Jess says he's better off without a girl from that family. Yes, because and, of course Jess hates that entire family. Yeah, and she tells Liz that she should be embarrassed. Yeah. Um, um, of course, there's some speculation that, that maybe she's seeing someone else yeah um, and that you know maybe that's the reason she's blowing him off um but of course we will find out in the next book whether it is that or whether it's something else yeah so uh, they they go in to see him and jessica tells him that there are plenty of other girls around but he says not to me there aren't oh. and then he tells liz that he tried to uh talk to trisha but she just keeps telling him there's nothing wrong She's it's, doing like, a Liz. it's like this is how Todd feels with you, Liz. Yeah, yeah, this like, is how it is, Liz. She's literally yeah, doing yeah. the thing that you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and Stephen says, uh, I know she's hiding something. I can see it in her eyes. And it's driving me crazy. What mm. terrible secret is Trisha keeping from Stephen? Find out in Sweet Valley number 12, when love dies. The clue is in the name. Oh, God. Yeah, that's going to be a laugh a minute. Yeah, you can <laughs> tell already that's going to be a fun one, can't you? Um, so this this was probably my frustrations aside. You know, not wrapping up the the Pete assault and the fact that the police don't get involved and that they don't really ever resolve the Mister Collins thing. I'm assuming in the next book, Mister Collins is just back and it's fine. Yeah, I think um, so. But uh, those aside, I think this was my favorite book so far. Oh, that's good. I liked the back and forth going between I like the this two book places. A lot. The first, when I first started, I was like, "Oh, I don't really want to go to New York. I want to stay in this story." Yeah. But then as the book went on, I was like, "No, actually, I love this. This is really great because it was like constantly something going on. You know, there was something going on in in Sweet Valley, and then we'd see more of New York and back and forth. I really liked it. Um, I think this is the most notes I've made. Yeah, uh, this is definitely the most notes I've yeah. made. Yeah, Tricktastic on Instagram said the parenting in this one is extra terrible. Yes, it is. And Ned and Alice aren't great at the best of times. No, no. This is probably the worst they are. I mean, Ned's a bloody lawyer. He should have known to have called the police. I mean, if anyone knows to call the police, it would yeah. be a lawyer, right? Um, and Sweet Valley Girl just says, Suzanne really pissed me off. I agree. <laughs> Suzanne is awful. Um, Sass Girl says she'll never forget about this book or the devilish Suzanne. Yeah, she always remembered it, even when she long ago forgot about the others. Oh my goodness! And I I remembered this one as well. This one. Was one I don't think I'm going to forget it in all for a while. Yeah, Sea Salt of Siren just says it's a solid classic. It yes. And Suzanne is a real one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of people were. Um, Do you know I hating Suzanne? And I don't blame them. I started this book hating Suzanne for being Miss Perfect. Like, I hated her because Liz just kept saying how perfect she was, and mm. it was just really annoying me. And then, obviously, when the mask slipped, I was like, oh, my God. Um, I think it's made worse because we hear her inner monologue, and we know what she's actually thinking, and she's just awful. She is a hideous person. Mm. She blames her parents for everything. Um, and, yeah, basically, she's just awful. 
Yeah, parents do sound awful. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we've seen firsthand they're they're pretty awful. Yeah. So um, we'll find out what is uh, what Trisha's secret is in the next book. Two weeks time. Two weeks time. Kelly's Roadhouse. We will find out when love dies. But mm. of course, in one week time. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Next week, we're back to uh, our. You know, we we work part time at Kelly's Roadhouse and part time at Casey's. Yeah. Next week, we are working at Casey's and we are discussing haunted house i'm so excited so am i can't wait it's uh it's gonna be halloween tastic in the middle of july or <laughs> early july yeah can't i wait. think wasn't it recently that that day where it's like halfway between both halloweens and people it might be yeah celebrate yeah. it i can't remember but yeah so we'll either see you in a week for the haunted house and in two weeks for when love dies thanks for listening thank you everybody catch you Bye. next time